Okay, look, for the last decade and a bit, nothing, nothing and no one has crushed it harder than Apple's iPhone silicon team. A7 is 64-bit. It's an A11 Bionic chip with a built-in neural engine. You can now record up to 4K at 30 frames per second in ProRes right in the camera app. New iPhone, new silicon, each year, every year, like clockwork. But this year, that might all come crashing down. So why? Or more appropriately, what the f Is it the chip shortage? A marketing ploy to inflate differences between the regular and the pro? Or have the laws of physics finally, the rock comes home level finally just caught up with Apple? Is it none of that, all of that, more than that? Let's say you're Apple, right? And your chips are already generations ahead of the competition. I mean, they're all stuck amping up the power draw, scraping out battery to make room for vapor chambers, cheating at benchmark LARP, you name it, and you're still on your lefting them for laps. Don't say you left. Come on! But physics is a jerk, a certified tech oligarch genius level a-hole. And even though you have this low, slow and wide architecture, this basically cheat code for silicon, where efficiency ends up driving performance, you're still dealing with a phone with a thermal envelope the size of a Pop-Tart. And typically, your buddies at Taiwan Semiconductor do you a solid. They introduce a significant new process shrink every two years. You know, tick tock, A12 four nanometer tick, A13 optimized tock, A14 five nanometer tick, A15 optimized tock. But this year, this year, it sounds like TSMC is not gonna tick at all. Their next big die shrink, three nanometers, just isn't gonna be ready in time. So it's not tick stop like Intel over the last many years, but it's absolutely stop gap. They're gonna go with the four nanometer process. That's really just a third generation five nanometer optimization. So for A16, that just takes all the easy gains right off the table. Everything Apple would usually get from stuffing way more transistors into the same space or the same transistors into way less space or more typically just the best balance of both, all of that gone like my Netflix sub after another price hike. But silver lining, that was gonna happen eventually anyway. There'll be new processes for sure. Three nanometer, one nanometer, angstrom, new microarchitectures for CPUs and GPUs, whole new technologies, thermal solutions, all of that. But when you're Apple, and you've been just so damn relentlessly aggressive when you just insist on slamming up against physics so damn always, every once in a while, the physics is gonna slam back and hard. I mean, we saw that with iPhone 6 and iPhone 6S power spike brownouts and with iPhone 13 Pro five core GPU throttling. It's just why exactly you've been working so hard on off big core features, on post big core features, neural and media engines, dedicated silicon that can accelerate specific tasks way more effectively than those already over swole cores could ever do. So where does differentiation come in then? Because typically you do that with feature sets, but it's the chipsets that enables it, like Pro Raw on the iPhone 12 or Pro Res on the iPhone 13. That one you enabled with that extra GPU core in addition to extra RAM, the kind you usually throw into the Pro models and a new storage controller just to keep up with all of it. And you've no doubt got just a ton of super secret plans for similar, if not the same kinds of new features for the iPhone 14 Pro as well. Features that like with the iPhone 13 and iPhone 12 don't get shared with the non-Pro versions because they don't have that extra RAM or GPU core or whatever it requires to enable them. And maybe that's why the chip shortage isn't as big a deal as it might otherwise be, because you know better than any other company on earth, it's a complex multifaceted supply chain issue. I mean, you've had your share of problems on legacy nodes, all those commodity chips that you still need that you haven't gotten around to replacing with custom silicon yet, but you've been largely immune on the leading edge nodes, the bleeding edge nodes on all that already custom silicon mostly because no one else makes as many premium devices as Apple. So no one else can prepay for priority near exclusive access to those bleeding edge nodes at the scale that you do, basically funding them. So whatever four nanometer yield TSMC has, you're just gonna get it. But what if that's still not enough? What if 
never mind not having three nanometer ready on time, they still can't fab sufficient four nanometers to meet just the massive demand that comes with the typical iPhone launch. What then? What do you do? Maybe you stick with A15 on five nanometer plus for those regular iPhone models, the 6.1 inch and the new 6.7 inch non-pro max. Maybe even go with the five core variant, the one with the extra RAM, call it A15 plus or whatever, because there's no smaller thermal envelope to worry about, not without the mini anymore. And it'll still give those base models a significant boost in performance and headroom year over year, basically in everything but IP generation, which really only hurts us silicon nerds in our tiny little silicon nerd hearts and we tend to buy and obsess over the pro models anyway, which is why you prioritize, why you use the A16 on four nanometers for those pro models, the 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch Pro Max. And they're about damn time, 48 megapixel pixel bin wide angle cameras, the eye shaped hole punches, the fancy new purple color, and lords of COBOL willing, something faster than USB 2 lightning, anything faster than USB 2 lightning. But who knows, because there's always plenty of slip twixt a rumor and a ship, even when there are multiple reports. Like, remember that flat Apple Watch Series 7 that was never actually a thing for last year? But this way, at worst, at the very worst, you've managed, Apple's managed to manage your way through a lack of real process shrink, maybe a chip shortage, while still maintaining year over year gains on all of the models in every way that really matters, and you can still provide the extra features for the pro level models that matter as well. Your Tim Cook and company in the middle of the 2020s, the Star Wars sequels of decades, and you're laughing. Well, not laughing, not even 100% happy, nowhere close, but you've just logisticked your way out of one hell of a jam. All that's left for you now is to open up your free copy of Morning Brew and enjoy, which each day, every day, gives you all the latest in business, tech, entertainment, you name it, everything you need to start your day in only five minutes. And it's not just that today's sponsor, Morning Brew, is impeccably curated with the most important stories, though it is, and always arrives ready to read before you wake up, though it does, it's just so well-written, so snappy and informative, irreverent and energetic, and yes, absolutely, completely, 100% free, seven days a week, Monday through Sunday. So just click on the link in the description and get your daily stocks and crypto highlights and stories where you can learn all about Netflix's free fall or briefly consider helping Elon buy Twitter. It's morning brew, it's free, it takes all of 15 seconds to subscribe and it starts your day off smart. So just hit the button on the screen or click the link in the description and you'll not only get a free newsletter that you'll actually read, but one that you will consistently enjoy. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so it is hitting up this playlist for way more on the iPhone 14 and Apple Silicon, including detailed breakdowns of just everything coming next. So hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.